stage, Paul Maria Rizziani. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Paul. I have a very difficult last name, or is that I'm attested to, and it's a silent eye in the middle, so it's Orazetti, or as my former boss said, Azerati, and the Irish uh, police officer who pulled me over recently, Orazetti. So the main reason for coming out here, luckily, is my wife uh, has some good friends uh, who have a bucket list, and the idea was to come up front of the stage and bury her soul. So before I start all this, I am in fact the oldest student here and probably the least weird of all of them. So my wife unfortunately wants me to learn how to be funny and wants me to take the stage and make sure that all of you go away laughing. So uh, with all of that, and again, I will attest that she has been and will always be right. And I have, in fact, written my uh, monologue here at least six times. And Adam has uh, graciously tried to take the best of all of it. So in dealing with all of this right now, tonight's theme was, what was I thinking? So we'll start off with that all, all right? So the first one right now goes back to uh, Stanley Park, beautiful place, four in the morning. Best friend, obviously the only people who come with you at that time of the morning, we go out and we want to be with the wildlife. So we're outside of the wolf den and we're hearing the wolves howl, so we got in and started howling ourselves. And as luck would have it, the beaver pond was next door. And I thought, Jesus, this would be a great time to go see the beavers. So back then, back then they had garbage cans that were large, reasonably deep, so I thought maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe I can get out to the hut, so off I go. So before you know it, I'm out in the middle of the water going, what was I thinking as I was sinking, right? So, I thought, wow, this is uh, what a life here. So I start going back in time here, and I, I am a Vancouver, as I said, born and raised, and I uh, did go to a famous elementary school named after a hanging horse that you judge, Sir Matthew Benby. Times were different back then, toys were a lot simpler. So uh, back in the old days, we used to throw rocks at each other. So. <laughs> Very inexpensive, and again, lots of them around. So we're in one of these strategic team moment exercises where we're sort of working together. And then that classic, what was I thinking moment is I actually got up from behind the barrel and took a look and I did see the rock hit me in the head. So. <laughs> Wow, this is amazing. As you're a young person in East Vancouver, you end up with a lot of scars. So. <laughs> and again, that expression that people tell you, you know what, be careful with the company you keep. So that prompted me to be sent to a very strict Catholic school by my parents uh, called Notre Dame. The uh, sister of tough love, I believe, is the translation. So <laughs> this was one of those moments. We're heading into math class. And as always, I'm at the front of the class, and my best friend's at the back of the class. This is a part of the tradition. So I'm sitting there uh, fid fidgeting, and uh, the screw uh, falls out of my desk in my hand. And I thought, Jesus, this might be a good time to do a screw joke with Sister Superior. So uh, ultimately, I end up in detention, as always. And you go into this, well, you're back here again, so what are you going to do? All right, I know a thousand lines, I must be a gentleman and not say anything bad to the sister. So I end up stealing an idea. That's the first thing from my best friend. He had actually devised this clever uh, mechanism where he had taped 10 big pens together. So he's trying to write a thousand <laughs> lines with these 10 pens taped together. I must be a gentleman and not piss the sister off. <laughs> All right, so then from there, you know, I ended up going uh, up the hill into a university which got me into the crazy world of advertising. So, very crazy environment, as luck would have it. I had a very uh, creative group of people I work with, and I had been uh, victimized. I had been uh, a victim of an IFB, which is, this is an improvised food bomb. So, this is something <laughs> that had been taped on the inside of my desk door, so I couldn't see it immediately. <laughs> I just had some, uh, sorry, uh, dinner, lunch, and I almost lost my lunch. So I thought, Jesus, this is horrible. So I, after a bit of bribing, I did find out who the perpetrator was. 
So I decided revenge was in order. So I ended up uh, going in on the weekend, had a very close friend who had this amazing device, which I ended up calling the NFB because it was a 10-year-old can of chicken stew. Can you imagine? <laughs> so I thought, all right, here we go. So I'm going to end up putting this chicken can, putting, I cranked open the can, put it up on the drop ceiling right above his desk. <laughs> I thought, all right, I'm going to get this guy. So. I come back Monday morning and I thought, all right, here we go, let's see what happens. So I go down the hallway. He's in there reading a, a newspaper. You may have seen a newspaper that has the alien stuff, Weekly World News. So it's about a <laughs> Peruvian werewolf family. So he's reading the story and he's laughing. And I'm going, wow, what's going on? So I walk into the room, no smell, but WTF, right? So you don't know this. <laughs> WTF, there's no smell. And down the hallway, I'm hearing this yelling, and my boss is going, <laughs> oh my God, something was gone wrong here. What was I thinking? Well, here you go. What had happened basically was I went into the office and the air conditioning had been turned off. So when I was in there, I was crying from the smell. It sort of was really accurate and it was like a wet Sasquatch had been in there. So I had to get out of the room. So from there, I realized that my joke had backfired and I actually had gassed the boss. So this was really, you know, as well as I think in moments. So getting near the end here. And again, I've had an issue with tequila and a few other uh, substance issues. <laughs> In particular, or a lot of any one type, so I'd like to spread things around. So the last one ends up with a toga party, and the toga party is always you're into the tequila, and somebody comes up and goes, I dare you to take your clothes off. And go, I'm the dark one. And, All right, well, I didn't want to say no to a dare. I actually went around and I thought, All right. You said you're all coming with me, and then I end up having to duck around a bunch of bushes to make my way back to the house. So, anyway, in closing, folks, I gotta tell you, life can suck the humor out of you. So, I want you to know that, and I want you to realize that coming to a comedy club like this will, in fact, fill up your joke tank and make sure we get you a lot of lubricant. So, one last thing, the joke is basically here humor must come from must be fresh, it must come from the heart, not your ass, like a bad ass that only you can smell.